Signing up the Dove Church. I'm excited that you guys have joined me this morning. I ask you to get your Bibles and I ask you to join me. I will be meeting you right back here in a few minutes. Okay? Get ready. We're going to be talking about prayer. Okay? See you in a minute. Bye bye. What it says to me Tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows Exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go When you ask, he cares When you see God opens up the door When you ask, He cares When you see, He's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door oh, I'm reading my B.I.B. early And this is what it says to me It tells me that I'm never, ever alone Down to us and gave his best Out of doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door God opens up the door oh, When you ask, He cares When you seek, He's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, He cares When you seek, He's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door God opens up the door. Oh, oh, oh. 
Hey, Grandpa Gus. What are you doing? Oh, hi, Herb. I'm praying right now. But it's not Sunday morning, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, I know, Herb. But I pray to God every day because he loves to hear his people talk to him. Really? Wow, I always thought I was supposed to pray to God on Sundays. Herb, you can pray to him anytime you want. It doesn't have to be in church. It can be at the park or even at your school. Well, what can I pray to him about, Grandpa? Well, you could pray about the simple things that you need, like clothes and food. <gasps> could I pray to him for a new toy that I really want, like a remote control airplane? Well, that's not really a need, Herb. That's more of a want. But God does give us things that we want, if it's beneficial to him. Oh. Well, that's pretty cool. Yep. You know, there's a couple verses in the Bible that talks about praying for things that we need. In Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Another one that I thought of is in John 15, 7, which says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be yours. Now that's awesome! Yep, another thing that I always like to pray about is giving thanks to the Lord. Well, what do you thank him for, Grandpa? Well, I thank him for Grandma Gus. I thank God that she's in my life. And I always thank God for things such as the sunshine and the rain, too. You even thank God for the rain? Well, of course, Herb. The flowers and the grass need some attention, too, you know. And besides, they're part of God's creation. In Psalms 107:1, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Wow, that's interesting. You know, Grandpa, I didn't know that we could pray to God any time we wanted. I think I want to pray to God and thank Him for everything, too. Well, that's great, Herb. In fact, I think I'll pray to God right now. Way to go, kiddo! Dear Lord, thank you for loving me and showing me how important it is to pray. And Lord, I thank you for my Grandma and Grandpa Gus. In Jesus' name, Amen. That was wonderful, Herb. Thank you. You're welcome, Grandpa. Okay, we're going to get started. Father, we come before you this morning. We just thank you, Father God. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that you love us so much, Father God, that you allow us to wake up to have another day in you. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name that you would touch our hearts and our minds, that we may receive your word today, dealing with prayer, and help us to realize the power of prayer, Father God, and that, and that when we pray, you hear us, Lord God, only if we believe, Father. So I pray this, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Amen. Okay, guys. Of course, today is the last lesson for this month in reference to prayer. And we learn over the, the Sundays that God wants us to pray. It's our one-on-one -on -one communication with him. And he wants us to come to him and share the things that's on our heart, the things that bothers us, the things that concerns us. Because guess what? He's concerned about the things that we are concerned about. And he wants us to come to him. Just like we go to our father or our mother when there's concerns going on with us in our school or something happened to us. He wants us to do the same thing because he loves us just that much, guys. And he wants that one-on-one -on -one time with him. He loves it when we come to him. And prayer is a form of communication and talking with just him. When we come to him and, and we say, Daddy, this is what's going on, and I need you to come and help me. I need you to give me wisdom. I need you to protect me. I need you to deliver me, help me to prevent me from saying this or doing this. Because I know this is not where your will is for my life. So God commands us to pray. And we learn in Matthew that Jesus even gave us a, 
a layout of what to pray and how to pray. Remember that prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And that prayer includes everything, guys, in our life. It, it, it includes acknowledging him. It includes asking him for our daily bread, which is our food that we eat every day. It also includes asking him to forgive us if we hurt or harm or did anything against anyone so that we may be forgiven. It also says it asks us to protect us from the evil one, to shield us, to protect us and shield us from the evil one. So everything is included. And even in the end of it, it says we acknowledge God. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. We're saying, God, I acknowledge that you are in control of everything. So I come and I bring it to you. Okay? So we, we're going to be finishing our lesson this month on prayer. And we're going to be coming out of the book of Second Timothy, 1 Timothy. Okay? And it's going to be started with chapter 5. 1 Timothy, chapter 5. Start with verses 13, 14, and 15. Okay? I'm going to give you a few minutes so you can get it too. Okay? So you can follow with me. 1 Timothy Chapter 5, verses 13, 14, and 15. Okay? And this is what it says. It said, Besides, they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house. And not only do they become idols, but also gossipers and busybodies, saying things they ought not to do. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. So, some that, in fact, have already turned away. So God wants us to remember that instead of doing something that we're concerned about or we're wondering about, he says, if we don't understand it, for us to just go and pray about it. And in here, it was saying that the younger women, that when they first got married, it was a lot of things that was going on in the church, and they wasn't quite clear and didn't understand. But it says that that we ought to go and get counsel, manage our homes, and not give the enemy an opportunity to come and hinder us from our purpose and win God's life. And when we do that, guys, part of that is praying. We need to pray and ask God, God. Help me to do what my purpose is on this earth. Help me to obey you. Help me to yield to your will and your word so that we will turn away from the from the things that the enemy would try to deceive us with. That's why it's very important for us to pray every day. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's a prayer. And that's what he's basically warning the women. He's telling them to stay, do what you're supposed to be do, do what you're called to do. And be very careful that you not be idle, that you not gossip, that you not are busybodies, but to do what you're supposed to do. Verse 14, it says, so I counsel young, younger widows to marry, younger women to just marry, to have children, to manage their homes, not to become idle. Because when you're idle, which uh, idle is another word for you have nothing to do. You got time on your hand. And when we have time on our hand and we don't put it to good use, we will end up doing things and, and being in the middle of stuff that we should never have been in in the first place. So God said, pray. Lord, help me. Lead me and guide me. Direct me today. Help me to be fruitful for you and for your glory and for the kingdom. Amen. And there's a story I want to share along with you guys too that I believe that falls in line with what we are talking about today. Okay, and it says prayer for all. Because guys, look, power, prayer is powerful. When you pray and you believe what you are praying in faith, God will answer it. And this is a story about some women that had a need and they prayed about it and God came and answered it. Okay, and he did it in such an amazing way. 
And it says, it coming from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. But the story reads like this. It says, when the young pastor went to visit his new church, five women of all ages, shapes, and sizes greeted him at the door. We've been praying for you to come. A 90-year-old woman said with a smile, I've been a member here since I was a little girl. They showed him into the small country church that had been at risk of closing its doors forever. She and her four friends had decided to pray for their church and for those who would make the decision about whether to keep the doors open or closed. The pastor was the answer to their prayers. The pastor's colleagues had argued him not to accept the position. It would be a dead-end move for his career, they said. What chance did they that tiny church have for survival in such a remote area. His advisors also said, may have been thinking logically, but what they didn't reckon was with the power of prayer. They said the church is out there in the middle of nowhere. There is no need for you to go out there. It's, it's hopeless. Just let them close the church down. But those women prayed. They didn't know that there were people that was praying for this church and praying that God would send them a pastor. And keep the doors open. So it says these five faithful women believe that God could do the impossible. When we pray and we talk to God, God can move impossible things. He can do impossible things that you imagine would never happen. God can come in and he can actually do it. If you believe. That's why it's important, guys. When we pray, we got to pray believing. We can't doubt. We have to believe it when we pray it. And it says, these five faithful women believed that God could do the impossible, and God did. No one could have predicted the large number of people who decided to move from the city to the suburbs. See, God, when he plans something, he already have it ordained. So it says, even though the church was small, people in the cities were beginning to move out to the suburbs where the church was. And it says, years later, the small country, same small country church, has continued to grow into a thriving ministry under the leadership of the man who kept, who felt compelled to accept the small pastorate. See, he thought it was going to be a very small ministry, very small church, just a few people in there. But he had not, he had no idea that God already had planned people to move out to the suburbs that would be attending, become a part of the church that he was going to pastor. And that's why it's very important to believe when you pray. Just pray. God, I don't know what's going on, but I need your help. It doesn't look like it's going to, you know, it's going to be okay, but I trust you that you're going to help us and it's going to be okay. Open the doors, God. Send somebody to help me. I need a friend. Send me a good friend. I need to pass this test at school. Give me the wisdom. Help me to pass this test. And God will do it. If you believe it, God, do it. Okay? It says, Paul letter also to Timothy encouraged us to pray for everyone. How easy it is to become complacent and believe that the prayers of one person doesn't really matter. We should never think that way, God. Don't ever think it's just me praying so it's not going to happen. Sometimes it takes one person. God just needs one person to pray. So pray. Believe. Believe that God would do it. It says, but wouldn't it be better to spend our time praying rather than giving up in frustration, second guessing, or criticizing others? He says, don't get frustrated when things are not going your way. Just go to God and pray and talk about it. Talk to God about it. Okay? Don't second guess where well, God's not going to answer me. God's not going to do this. He's not going to help me do this. Because you don't know. That's why we're supposed to go and we're supposed to pray. It says also, just imagine what would happen if each of us took on the serious business of praying for all those around us. God wants us to pray. And he not only wants to pray for ourselves and what's going on in our family and our homes, he wants to pray for others. Do you know anybody that needs prayer right now? Do you know anybody in your school, in your classroom, any of your schoolmates, any kid that you see at school that you know that needs help. Pray for them. Somebody's being bullied. Pray for them. Say, God, I pray for this person that the kids will stop bullying him. And that he will get a friend. 
that would be nice to him and nobody everybody stop being mean to him. Pray, pray those things and see what happens. He also says, not just saying we'll pray, but really praying. And not just say, okay, I'll, I'm going to pray. But pray with your heart. Pray for real. Say, Lord, he needs a friend. I pray for him that you would give him a friend. Even if it's me, I pray you let me be his friend. But pray sincerely from your heart, guys, because guess what? God already knows what's in our heart. So we can't come to him pretending. We have to be honest. So we have to pray. Praying and asking God for wisdom. Asking God for guidance. When you have a decision you have to make and you're not sure what, what to do, go to God first. Say, Lord, I need your help in this. I have to make a decision on something. Something's going on. I have to make a choice. And I need your help because I don't know which way to go. Pray and ask God for that guidance. Pray and ask him for wisdom. God, I need your help. Should I do this or should I not do this? Should I be this person's, you know, this new kid's friend or, or should I? You know, the things that he does, should I hang out with him or not? He'll tell you. He said, and also for protection. God, protect me. When my parents go to work, protect them. When we go on our vacation, protect us. Bring us back home safely. Protect our vehicle. Put Pray over the vehicle. It's a lot of things. When somebody is sick in your family, pray for them. Father, I pray that you will heal my family. Heal my sister. Heal my brother. Heal, heal my parents. My parents lost their job. Give them another job. A better job than the one they had, Father. Because I know this is your will for us. Also says... And giving thanks for people's willingness to serve. Five women prayed that God would make a difference in their church. And look what happened. And God did. He not only sent them a pastor, but he also sent people to the church. So it, it continued to grow and grow and grow. Just by praying. It says, think of what God might do when you commit to pray for the people that you know. Who do you know that needs prayer? It said, describe a time when you knew that your prayers made a difference. Have you ever prayed and God answered it for you? If you haven't, pray. Ask, pray and ask God for something. And, and make sure it's for His in his will, though. Don't just pray crazy stuff. Just pray. Something that you know is in God's will. God, help me to be more nicer. Help me to be kind. Help me to forgive. Help me not to be angry. And God will help you. It also says, what priorities does prayer have in your life? Do you pray every day, guys? Before you go to bed, do you pray? Before you go to school in the morning, do you pray? Do you pray for your lunch when you go to school? Are you ashamed? Are you shy? You don't want everybody to see you praying. We're supposed to pray. Because when we do that, guys, it draws people to God. Okay? We should never be ashamed to pray. Never. And also, it says, how often do you take the time to pray for those around you? Do you know someone who needs prayer right now? Then pray for them right now. God will lay somebody on your heart that needs prayer. That needs some help. And God wants you to be that one to pray for him. Okay? Because there's a lot of things going on in this world. There's a lot of things going on in kids' lives in our classrooms that we don't even know about. Those kids that are angry all the time. The ones that try to bully people all the time. The ones that are quiet in the classroom all the time. It's a reason. It's a reason. Okay? So instead of laughing with everybody else, laughing with them, pray for them. Say, Lord, help them. The person that says say bad words all the time. Pray for them. Just pray for them. And see how God moves in their life. Lord, I pray for them. I ask you to save them so they can stop saying bad words. Stop saying things. Stop being a bully. And they be nice instead of mean. Okay? Help me with my grades. Help me to be more attentive in the classroom. Help me to help my parents at home. Help me do my homework when I'm told. It's a lot of things, guys. And you can come to God with everything. Nothing's too simple. Something like, oh, that's too silly. I'm not going to ask God. Ask him. 
Ask him. Because you got to realize God is going to pray. He's going to answer your prayer in his way anyway. It's not going to be in your will. Sometimes he'll answer in a way we never expected. But it's always going to be for our good. Okay? So I'm going to close with this scripture. It's coming out of James. I don't know if you guys know. James is in the back of the Bible. James is right after Hebrews. Okay? First Timothy. Second Timothy. Titus. Hebrews. And then James. Okay? And we're going to be coming out of James, the fifth chapter, verse 16. And this is what it says, guys. Fifth chapter, verse 15. Look what it says. It says, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. I'm going to go back up to verse 13. Prayer of faith. It says, is any of you in trouble? He should pray. Is any of you happy? Let him sing. Is any of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective. God wants us to pray. Amen? So I want you guys to remember that. Pray. No matter what it is, take it to God and pray. Say, God, I ask you to come and help me with this. And see what God do. Okay? And just trust and believe that God hear you. Remember, you got to remember, you got to believe that God hears you when you pray. Amen? Okay? So I will see you guys next Sunday. You guys take care. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Lyon, and I'll be reading you James 5, 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another to that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. Talk to you.